I'm here! I made it to episode 10, and I think it's high time I conquered one of my holy grail favorite arcade games known as the ever so infamous Mortal Kombat. But wait, I can do better. Let's do all of the first four arcade games in four different episodes. Mind you, I have enough material for each. It kind of fits with my scheme of two good games and one bad, since I think Mortal Kombat 3 was one of the weaker entries into the franchise, but it's still in the universe where blood is more common than water, known as Mortal Kombat. Today I'll be talking about the first game, known by many as simply Mortal Kombat. This could possibly confuse you since the newest title in the franchise is also titled Mortal Kombat. How do we fix this? Simple. The newest game was never released in the arcade, so I won't be reviewing it. Unless you know of an enthusiastic place that makes their own arcade cabinets out of PlayStation 3s and charges you $15 at the door, so then you can play all the games and they're free, Galloping Ghost, Brookfield Illinois, play games there now. So for the sake of my show, I'll just say new Mortal Kombat if it ever comes up. Why did I enjoy this game so damn much? I may have said a thing or two about it in my video about people who don't do fatalities. I had no idea what to expect from this game, but I knew one thing was certain, you could blow someone's head up. Really, I just like seeing realistic depictions of death and Mortal Kombat was as real as it got for the time. It was an over-the-top sense, but the characters looked real. I was in a dark place when this game came out, so shoot me. Oh, and I didn't have to go bicycling 14 miles to an arcade to play it. It was popular enough to find one within a 10-mile radius of my house. To repeat a story I said in a previous video that wasn't an arcade recall, my father is dragging me and my cousin Al out of an arcade. There's a crowd around a machine, we pass by as we are leaving, and I turn around as the crowd parts just long enough for me to see this. I was creeped out, but I needed to see it again. I needed to see a guy's head blow up and have all the focus on it. Not just some passing by blood in your average shooter, this was the defining thing that got me hooked. All the focus for that couple of seconds was how horribly your opponent died. From your doing. Out in 1992 as a response to Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat was not the greatest game, I'll admit it. It was very minimalistic. Each character had the normal moves and only like three special moves. One would always be a projectile no matter who you were. But I liked that the projectiles would go past each other rather than cancel each other out like in other fighting games. Everyone got screwed if two were thrown at the same time. There were some small combos. Unless you were making a science out of the game, then I think you might have known some ridiculous ones, but there was no counter for them until the third Mortal Kombat. The graphics were great, somewhat dull on the colors, but I felt that added to it. It almost felt like an old kung fu movie with its somewhat blurry appearance. Not to mention, almost all the characters were wearing ninja or karate outfits and the backgrounds had a very Asian influence to them. So there were sweet little details throughout the stages as well. In fact, I only recently saw that Shang Tsung is sitting above the monks in this stage, not to mention the heads of the creators on the spikes in the bottom of the pit. Of course, we could talk about the controversy this game started, but as far as I'm concerned, that just gave Mortal Kombat more promotion. Sure, it would make your average yuppie housewife cringe to see their little child playing such a horrible game, but the instant she was gone, the kid was all over it again. Everyone saw the head getting ripped off with a spine attached to it on the news so much that they became desensitized to it, and then the Mortal Kombat clones marched in. It's no secret that before MK, the amount of violence that was in games was there, but it had no real pause to admire what you did. You just kept going. After Mortal Kombat, every fighting game went on the bloody angle if it could. Except Capcom, they already had their style established when it came to arcade fighting games. I'm told Street Fighter 2 is loved by lots of people. Of course, blood alone cannot make a great game, even if you add gore. See previous arcade recalls on Bloodstorm and Time Killers if you need more info on that. There were also the inclusion of fatalities in games all over the friggin' place. Did Killer Instinct really need them? Did it? Really? Fun fact time. Did you know this game was made with a crew of just four people? Did you also know that it was supposed to be a licensed game for the movie Bloodsport featuring Jean-Claude Van Damme? Did you also know that this is who Johnny Cage's character is based off of? I'm glad it was a standalone game. I shudder to think of an alternate universe where Van Damme would tank the Mortal Kombat series or be more famous for it. We'll leave him associated with Street Fighter, shall we? Like I said, I'm going on a Mortal Kombat tear. This is part one of four, and if you see a Mortal Kombat arcade machine anywhere and you have some time to kill, this is a good one. It's not all that impressive by today's standards, but without it, we would all be playing very tame fighting games with hugging and being nice and knowing getting a spear through their chest, and everybody would still be in one piece at the end. No, I won't talk about the censored Super Nintendo version. I got ripped off. <coughs> Arcade Past, let's make it last, next up, Mortal Kombat 2.